Thank you very much. Um, what I'd like to do very quickly is to run through the, the main problems that are occurring in the world due to rapid climate change, and these will be studied in, in the course, and then what we can do about them in terms of mitigation, especially using uh, technology, which is, of course is characteristic of the Polytechnico of Torino. So, um, first of all, we start with the very vital importance of experiments and observation in, in science. So even if you're very old, like me, you still have to go out and measure things, in this case, trying to measure why the ice is getting thinner in the barren sea. Um, okay. Okay, um, now the reason why the Arctic is very important for uh, studying rapid climate change is that it's warming up far more rapidly than any other part of the planet. Uh, the area from 60 north to 90 north is, uh, has a, a multiple of the rate of warming of every other part of the Earth. So what happens in the Arctic is what will happen to the rest of the world um, in a few years' time. Um, so we, in, uh, okay. uh, what we found is that the, the sea ice in the Arctic is retreating very rapidly. The yellow here shows um, the summer sea ice position in 2007 and the black is what the summer position used to be. So there's about half the area of the Arctic Ocean is now open water in the summer when it used to be ice covered. Uh, this just shows how this area has declined every year and so it's steadily on the way to, 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 to getting to zero ice in the, in the middle of the summer. Um, this shows the same thing expressed in terms of what's called the death spiral. We look at every month in the year and see how the ice uh, has declined from the 1970s until today. And we see that every month of the year shows a decline. That's why we have a spiral. And, but the black line, which is the interior of the central line is September. And that's obviously, you can see, is going to be the month uh, of the year in which the ice area will go to zero first. So that rapid reduction of the ice has lots of impacts on the, on the world's climate. And that's one of the things that we study in the course. One is that um, we have uh, a, a large increase in the emission of methane gas from the seabed of the Arctic. These are methane bubbles coming up under ice. And this is because a big area of the Arctic is very shallow continental shelf. That's the light blue color there. Uh, which is only 100 metres deep. And when the ice retreats in the summer, the water can warm up. And the, that um, means that the methane, which is buried underneath in the sediments, can escape. And we're getting increasing amounts of methane gas bubbling up out of the Arctic seabed in the summer. This, this shows some methane plumes seen from a sonar system. And this shows what the methane's like when it's still down there in the sediments. It's combined with ice to form a substance called methane hydrate. And the methane hydrates disintegrate and methane gas comes out. This is an extremely serious threat to the climate if, uh, if all of the methane in the sediments starts to escape. So it's one of the things that comes out of the loss of ice. Um, so, ah. Okay, uh, the second problem which we need to understand is the fact that because the ice is retreating, this is making the air over Greenland warmer and the Greenland ice sheet itself is now melting at a very rapid rate. Uh, I was lucky enough to be up there on August the 1st this year, which was the day when there's been more melt in a single day than any previous recorded day. That was a 12 and a half billion tons of ice melted that day and goes into the ocean. And what it leaves behind is a black surface because the, as the ice retreats, as the ice melts, 
the dirt that's accumulated over hundreds of years stays on the surface. And uh, so the ice gets darker and darker, and that means it melts faster and faster. And now, um, in the past, very little of the Greenland ice sheet used to melt in the summer, and now the entire ice sheet uh, has meltwater all over it in the summer, increasing the amount of water that goes into the ocean, and this increases the, uh, the rate of global sea level rise. So the entire planet feels the result of change in the Arctic uh, through the melting of the Greenland ice sheet. So as time goes on, our predictions of how much sea level rise there'll be by the end of the century are continually increasing because we're continually being surprised by the amount of melt that's going on. So it's now more than a metre and it might well be much more than that. That's a terrible threat to cities uh, all over the world and not only to cities but to low-lying areas where a lot of poor people live like Bangladesh. Um, another effect of, of this is the fact that the jet stream, which is this wind system shown here separating the Arctic from the tropics, is changing shape as the tropics warm up, as the Arctic warms up, the temperature difference between the Arctic and the tropics decreases. The, the jet stream which separates these becomes uh, very much a, a meandering jet stream and that leads to um, extreme weather effects in mid-latitudes of heat and cold and that leads to disruption of crops and we can see that the, the food price index produced by the United Nations which was 100 in, in the year 2000 has gone up now to over 200 so food is twice as expensive and that means that there's, this has led to enormous amounts of unrest, disruption and, and uh, uh, revolutions in third world cities and these are some of the ones things that have happened during periods of peaks in food costs another thing that hasn't changed is that although we have all kinds of agreements now um, the Paris climate agreement to reduce emissions we haven't reduced emissions and emissions are still going up and that means the carbon dioxide level in the atmosphere is still rising rapidly this is the uh, as measured on the uh, observatory in Hawaii. It's there's no sign that anything we've done has reduced the rate of rise of sea level, and also the rate of de of decline of sea ice, this red line, is also accelerating uh, as compared to what computer models tell us should be happening, which is the black line. So something is happening that's different from what we understand. Okay, so we have to do something about this, and of course, um, what do we do? The answers really, are, well, the, the answer that everybody gives is reduce our carbon emissions, but all that will do is slow down the rate of warming. What we find need are ways to actually reduce, not only reduce warming, but get us back to a cooler climate. And here we have to use technology, and that's where um, an institution such as this one can be very valuable. One method is to re increase the reflection of, of radiation from the planet and the way that's been suggested is to uh, introduce very tiny uh, particles of seawater into the bottoms of clouds at sea. Uh, by this, this is the vehicle that would be used to do it and this makes the clouds brighter and increases the reflection from the clouds. Uh, so this is being proposed and it's, it's hopefully going to be uh, enacted. Um, and then another methods, other methods really involve actually taking carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And here, here we use um, various methods have been proposed where you pass the air over an absorbing material uh, and the carbon dioxide is taken out of the atmosphere and these and you need to use it for something. You can't just have it disappear. So the methods that have been proposed include turning it into, so di direct air capture is what we're talking about. And this is being worked on here in the Polytechnico. Uh, and it could be the most urgent need facing mankind. We have to take 
carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere, otherwise we can't beat global warming. So um, the methods that are being developed uh, are one of them that has been developed originally in Iceland, and this is the plant in Iceland where carbon dioxide come, taken out of the atmosphere is pumped down into subterranean rocks where it reacts with the rocks and forms a, a solid. Uh, a solid. Um, the, there's another branch of that same company working in southern Italy and uh, this is uh, with the Polytechnic being involved in that work. Then another technique involves taking the carbon dioxide, reacting it with with uh, uh, with hydrogen and carbon and, and calcium oxide to give um, you uh, artificial limestone. This is a company in California makes artificial limestone, and here they are. The limestone is now incorporated in concrete, and this produces a concrete that that is carbon negative. That less and uh, that has been used to re-roof San Francisco Airport, so it, it does work. And other techniques involve actually producing a material called biochar, which is uh, which is uh, evolved by taking any kind of agricultural waste and by a process of, of heating it with a small amount of oxygen. This is pistachio nuts. Um, with a small amount of oxygen gives you um, but in this, this equipment gives you a uh, material called biochar, which is a uh, fertilizer and produces uh, power and takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So it does a lot of things for you. So fine, so really to, to, to research these things is a very important, very important end for, for um, scientists and engineers and the technology is technology that's needed now to save the planet from climate change and not only save ourselves but of course save the whole ecosystem and the habitat represented here by some of the creatures that live in the arctic ocean so thank, okay. you. thank you thanks a lot Peter. Uh, my name is Francesco Laio, I'm from Politecnico and I'm here as a director of this, uh, of this master. I just want you uh, to tell you some more things uh, about the master. Uh, I, will not, uh, I will try not to repeat uh, uh, the things that you already know or that you, uh, that you can uh, understand directly uh, from browsing the, the website. Uh, so what I would like to tell you uh, is something more about what uh, let me see if I'm able to, to work with this. Okay, this is the, this is the program structure. Uh, you have seen it, some more words on uh, what, what we want to do with, with, with this master. Of course, what we want to do uh, is to have, uh, have people that uh, uh, after uh, participating in this master uh, will be able to find a job uh, in the business companies uh, uh, that are now very much interested in this topic. So this is why we have created this master. So our main uh, scope with the master is not uh, uh, to have uh, one more moment uh, when uh, uh, saying um, things about uh, what is climate change and why it is important. Uh, we all, we think you already know it. What we want you to, to do is to try to uh, help you uh, developing some uh, specific tools uh, which will be important for your future work activity. And uh, uh, so this is why our program is made up of uh, um, relatively few preliminary courses uh, that uh, will introduce you to the main topics that will be treated uh, in the master. So we will have a, a, an introduction from Professor Wadhams, uh, and then we will speak about uh, monitoring and observation, uh, about climate policy, economics and finance, uh, about uh, energy transition. Uh, each of these uh, of these modules will be will be uh, directed uh, by by a different uh, professor or. Uh, a different person from uh, 
from business companies because uh, we have created a master structure where uh, the teachers uh, come either from the, the, the academy or from the business companies. We have many people from business companies uh, who will be uh, involved uh, in the, also in this uh, initial part of the master. After that, uh, we, will, uh, we will speak about the two main dimensions of climate change, uh, of climate change solutions, uh, that are of course uh, mitigation uh, on the one hand and adaptation on the other hand. And uh, we will have a final part which, which is very much oriented uh, to corporate approaches to climate change. So we will speak about uh, uh, sustainable management, corporate, corporate social accountability and uh, so on and so forth. The master, uh, this part uh, of the of the master course will be uh, will be concluded uh, by a one week workshop uh, where our partners, uh, business companies, uh, will uh, will be with us and will explain uh, how they tackle these uh, specific topics uh, in their real world uh, uh, while while they they work uh, in their everyday uh, work. And the master will be concluded by an internship, which will last something like three months, uh, tentatively between September and November uh, 2020. And uh, in December 2020, the master will be over. So these are uh, our uh, main uh, partners. Uh, as you can see, uh, we, have, uh, we have companies uh, uh, from a very, different in size and very different uh, in terms uh, of what they are doing. Uh, we have uh, the, a chance to, to have here a representative from one of uh, these companies and I would leave the floor uh, to, to, to Veronica Rossi from La Razza uh, to say some more words uh, about uh, what uh, uh, business companies can bring uh, in, into this master. So, Thank you. Yours. Thank you very much. Um, yes, as, they, as the professor introduced me, I work in the Lavazza Sustainability Department. And actually, what, what is interesting is that our department was created just three years ago, meaning that this kind of topics are becoming more and more important for companies. We are a food company, beverage company. And um, what we are seeing is, is not that just sustainability is becoming important, it's that climate change is becoming important also for us. And why? Because we are dealing with a global commodity, coffee, an agricultural commodity that is um, facing a lot of challenges because of climate change. I was saying that in one of the graphs that the professor was um, showing before, we had some coffee producing countries in the graph. Uganda, for example, or Yemen, uh, or um, all companies, or sorry, or can all countries in the tropical areas. They are not just coffee producing countries, they are also the most affected countries by climate change. So what we are facing is, um, is a problem in the, in the availability of these products, not just in terms of quantity, but also in terms of quality because climate change is really threatening the quality of coffee and also the, again, the availability of it. So we risk losing coffee or losing good coffee in the short term. It's not, it's not uh, a long-term challenge, it's a short-term challenge that we have and we need to face. So um, actually this master for us is interesting, not just because Politecnico is in Torino, our main city, not just because um, we, we like to partner with universities, but also because we want to um, take something from this master too, maybe some, some suggestions, some, some new ideas, because actually climate change is now and the, the challenges that climate change is, is climate change is posing to industry is really happening now. Actually, as in Lavazza, we are working in different um, uh, interesting areas that are tackled actually in the master program that I saw that I just saw now in the in this in the slide. We are working with coffee producing communities in coffee producing countries, uh, trying to help communities tackle climate change in their daily life. So we partner with NGOs, with local foundations, with local stakeholders in order to understand 
what kind of agricultural techniques can be applied by farmers, very uh, simple agric agricultural techniques in order to tackle climate change effects. But we are also here in our headquarters trying to tackle climate change um, with our offices in some ways. Lavats actually two years ago uh, transferred all its uh, Italian um, offices in a new building, which is the Nuvola Lavazza, the cloud Lavazza, which is LEED certified, Leadership in Environmental and Energy Design. And actually this is an example of how also building and cities can, um, can tackle climate change in some, in some ways. So for us, it's really interesting because climate change is becoming a challenge in all our operations from coffee supply until our office is here in Torino. So that's why we are here and we are interested in it. And um, actually, I, I want to also to encourage uh, students not coming from a scientific background because myself, I studied political science. So <laughs> I'm not an engineer, but I work in this field of sustainability and, I, I, and I'm happy with it. So um, it's, uh, I, I think this is an opportunity then if I had this opportunity five years ago, six years ago when I graduated, I surely, surely I would have uh, applied for it. So I think it's interesting and important for students to go through this kind of path nowadays because companies really need it. And there's no professionals nowadays really having a background in this kind of things. So thank you again for having involved us. Thank you very much. We can we can move forward. I think we can move forward to the to the next one. Uh, so uh, as you as you have understood, what what we want to do is to uh, help you uh, moving in this new market, which is uh, very rapidly evolving with uh, really thousand of uh, uh, of jobs that, that uh, every day. Uh, are posted on the on, on LinkedIn or, or this kind of uh, of, uh, of tools. So uh, what we want to do with this master to help you moving into this into this new market. Uh, the uh, some some more uh, practical details. Uh, the admission requirements. Uh, there we we. we we have tried to keep uh, as wide as possible uh, the, uh, the the set of uh, uh, of, um, of master of science uh, um, um, courses uh, that that uh, from from where we, we admit uh, people. Uh, we uh, we will uh, we will base our our selection on uh, a motivation letter that you will be asked to to to, to write and send, and of course on the academic background. Around, including, if possible, a summary of the master thesis that will help us to uh, understand uh, what you have done uh, in, the, in the past few years. And uh, we will interview uh, the, the, the best candidates, uh, the shortlisted candidates, uh, in order to uh, prepare the final list of, uh, uh, of people who, uh, who, who will participate in the master. Uh, the, uh, the tuition fee is uh, four thousand euros for for the for the entire year, but we will uh, we will be able to to to, to give you uh, ten waivers uh, for the total amount covering the entire tuition fee, and this will be awarded to of course to the uh, to the to the, the first uh, uh, the ten people in the in the list of uh, admitted students and uh, other uh, 10 partial waivers uh, for 2,000 euros, which means that, of, of course, you will have to pay for the other 2,000 euros. Um, uh, the, uh, the, this uh, this uh, master course is included into, uh, into the list of, uh, uh, of master courses uh, which are uh, provided by the uh, specializing master's programs uh, in, uh, in Polytechnico. We have a long-lasting experience in providing this second-level masters, and so we we are very well organized, and we can provide you with all of the needed facilities for having a nice year in Torino. The, uh, this is a very tentative program timeline, just to help you understand what will be going on. 
uh, each of the uh, of the modules will uh, will take one week because the, all of the modules are either 30 hours or 20 hours. Uh, this is uh, very important uh, for us because uh, we have collected um, uh, we have collected teachers from uh, all over the world, and so uh, this is uh, this is the only way for having people coming from. Uh, uh, from the US or, or from or from UK uh, to, to come to, to, to give lectures in, uh, in Politecnico. Uh, the, um, the, the schedule will, will be something like that. So we will have uh, uh, some, some weeks uh, when you will have uh, lectures and some, uh, uh, some weeks uh, when, uh, when uh, you will be uh, free and you will have time to, uh, to study. Uh, we will uh, tentatively end this first part uh, uh, of, the, of the master uh, in, uh, in July. Uh, after that, uh, as, as mentioned, uh, we will have internships uh, from September to November for a, for a total of 500 hours uh, in uh, our partner companies or in other companies that will be selected uh, after that. Uh, this is uh, more or less uh, all. Um, this is just a summary uh, uh, of, uh, of the, 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 the most important information. So the, uh, the very relevant one is that uh, you will have time uh, up to uh, November 22 for submitting your application. Uh, so we have only 10 days uh, from now. Uh, the, the maximum number of participants will be, will be 30. The language will be English, of course. And uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you need uh, further information, of course, we are, uh, we are here to, to answer to your questions. Or you can, uh, you can write to the email addresses that are listed in, in, 